For those new to keyboards and digital pianos, there is a whole lot of confusion out there as to which instrument is the right one for you. In this video, I will explain to you what the differences are between a keyboard and a digital piano. I will also make it clear to you what is the difference between a synthesizer and a Ranger keyboard, a music workstation and a keyboard MIDI controller. So make sure you watch till the end of this video to get full value from this information. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Jeremy C. I am a music teacher and musician for the last 25 years. On my channel, I have made more than 300 reviews, tutorials and music lessons about keyboards and digital pianos. If you value knowledge like this, make sure you subscribe to my channel and smash that notification bell icon. Strictly speaking, any instrument that you play with keys is technically a keyboard instrument. As such, digital pianos, synthesizers, music workstations, arrangers and many MIDI controllers are classified as keyboards. And to a layperson, that is what they would perceive as a keyboard too. Whenever they see black and white keys, they would just call it a keyboard. However, there is a further, more granular categorization of different types of keyboards and digital pianos based on its core intrinsic function. Let's start by talking about digital pianos. A digital piano is essentially a type of electronic keyboard that is designed to emulate a traditional acoustic piano both in the way the keys feel and the way the sound is produced. Digital pianos these days use recorded samples of an acoustic piano which are triggered by the keys of the keyboard and then amplified through internal built-in speakers. There are two main characteristics of a digital piano. The first characteristic is a digital piano usually has 88 keys, just like an acoustic piano. However, you can also find 76 and 73 keys variants of digital pianos as well. The second characteristic is a digital piano would have keys that are weighted which recreate the touch and feel of an acoustic piano. Very often, digital pianos are designed to look like an upright or a grand piano. Usually, this serves more as an aesthetic feature and doesn't contribute significantly to the actual sound of the digital pianos. The advantage of a digital piano over an acoustic piano is digital pianos are usually smaller, they weigh and cost much less than an acoustic piano and digital pianos don't need to be periodically tuned. Just like most other musical instruments, the sound of a digital piano can also be amplified with external speakers for larger venues or be played silently using headphones. Due to the more complex mechanism and the need to reproduce a realistic piano voice, Digital pianos are almost always more expensive than keyboards in the same feature category. Digital pianos usually contain fewer sounds than a similarly priced keyboard because the manufacturers expect the buyers of digital pianos to be using predominantly the piano voices. Digital pianos cost from about 300 US dollars for portable beginner versions and up to 20,000 US dollars for really fancy hybrid digital console pianos. You can find my video on the best beginner digital pianos over here and do check out the links to my recommended beginner digital pianos in the description below. The majority of home music keyboards generally come with 61 keys. You can of course find 76, 88, 49 or even 32 key variants but these are the exception rather than the rule. Depending on the cost, the keys may or may not be touch sensitive. A keyboard that is not touch sensitive will not respond to how hard or how softly you play the keys. The keys on keyboards are also generally not weighted and will feel lighter to the touch. 
Standard portable keyboards will usually come with a couple of hundred sounds containing pianos, guitars, orchestral instruments, organs, harmonicas, and a variety of electronically synthesized sounds. And home keyboards also usually come with built-in speakers, whereas professional keyboards are meant to be connected to external PA systems and do not usually come with built-in speakers. The realism of the voice samples, the note polyphony, which is the number of notes you can sound at the same time, the quality of the keybed are some of the things that determines how expensive a keyboard is. Prices of keyboards range from entry-level ones that cost about $100 US to high-end professional ones with a price tag in excess of $10,000. Generally, consumer home keyboards are significantly easier to operate as an all-in-one device. Professional keyboards are usually meant to be part of the equation for live performances, music production, or sound shaping, and will definitely require some degree of expertise to use. As a young boy, my parents with good intentions bought me a very expensive high-end professional keyboard as my very first instrument. That was really a mistake because if you are just starting out with figuring out the ABCs on the keyboard, a keyboard or a digital piano costing a few hundred dollars is more than adequate. I have made a video about the best beginner keyboards under $199 and you can check it out right over here. A large majority of consumer level keyboards tend to have arranger functions. Arranger keyboards have a whole bunch of factory program rhythms and accompaniments covering wide genres such as pop, rock, jazz, country to world music. With as little effort as a single finger press on your left hand, you can have a lush multi-instrumental band accompanying you as you play a tune. The term arranger came about because you can use variations in rhythmic complexity, different sound settings, adding factory program instrumental fills, musical introductions and endings to build up a song arrangement. In my experience, arranger keyboards are often scorned upon by musical snobs due to its ease of use. But in a one or two man band live playing scenario where we often have to take song requests and for those who want to get very decent music without slaving hundreds of hours laying a hundred multi-track project in a DAW, arrangers do still have a very strong value proposition. This convenience and ease of use of arranger keyboards does come with a disadvantage of course. Anyone who has just the same keyboard would just sound pretty much the same as you would predominantly be using the factory program sounds and rhythms. Any sound shaping capabilities are far less than a professional music workstation or a synthesizer. Of course, there are really expensive arranger keyboards that cost in excess of $5,000 and these arranger keyboards start to blur the lines between an arranger and a music workstation. If you want to know what beginner arranger keyboards I recommend and their prices, do check out the links in the description below. A keyboard synthesizer has an unmistakable look with loads of knobs, dials and switches on its fascia. A keyboard synthesizer wouldn't look out of place in an airplane's cockpit. A conventional synthesizer doesn't trigger recorded sound samples when a key is pressed. A synthesizer's main role is to synthesize sounds that is to create and sample new sounds using primarily four different waveforms. And these basic waveforms are the sine, sawtooth, square and triangle waveforms. Combining multiple tones, altering the harmonics using oscillators and resonators, a synthesizer can produce sounds with different attack, decay, sustain and release rate, 
also known as ADSR envelope shapes. And if you want to get deeper into sound synthesis, there is additive and subtractive synthesis as well as analog and digital synthesizers to consider. You can also harness CV and gates and MIDI to build complex setups with arpeggiators and hardware sequences for the full works. But this is way beyond the scope of this video so I won't go into that. In a nutshell, if your aim is to create unique synthesized soundscapes in an electronic world, then you should look at getting a synthesizer over an arranger or sample based keyboard. Computers used to be extremely expensive, clunky and elusive devices that were not found in many places. Therefore, using computers as part of music making wasn't a very common thing. Music stations strive to be the jack of all trades and can often be a master of many things. Packed into one single instrument, the music workstation, depending on how much you spend, contains sounds, rhythms, an arpeggiator, a sampler, and a very advanced multi-track sequencer that allows for granular deep level event editing of recorded materials. The fact that you can carry an entire music production studio in your gig bag and bring anywhere with you is a very appealing proposition. But cheap, powerful, and portable computers have altered the music production landscape. In my opinion, laptops have become affordable and they are compact and so powerful that they almost always surpass hardware music workstations in computing ability. Why be limited to a 16 track sequencer when you can have 999 tracks? Why be limited to 4 GB of sample memory in a workstation when for just $100, you can get a 500 gigabyte portable SSD for you to store your sample library. Why be limited to 256 notes of polyphony when you can get unlimited polyphony if your computer is fast enough? There are only two main reasons why I think music workstations are still in use. Firstly, it is an all-in-one package, especially for those who still enjoy the tactile feel of using hardware workstations. Secondly, everything just works out of the box. Using a computer requires musicians to have some computing knowledge as well as to handle the headaches of hardware and software conflicts. You can find my recommended beginner music workstation in the video description below. If all you want to do is make music digitally using your computer, you will need a MIDI keyboard controller. MIDI stands for Musical Instruments Digital Interface and it allows different music devices to communicate with each other. A dedicated MIDI keyboard has no sounds loaded inside the keyboard. When you play on your keyboard connected to the computer via MIDI, the note information is transmitted to your computer. These days, most keyboards, regardless if it is an arranger, a workstation, or a synthesizer, has MIDI capabilities. Even a very cheap $90 Yamaha PSS A50, which I reviewed over here, has MIDI functions. That being the case, why do you need a dedicated MIDI keyboard? A MIDI keyboard allows you to be more efficient and effective when interfacing with your DAW such as FL Studio, Cubase, Ableton Live or Logic. The MIDI keyboard has buttons for transport controls such as play, pause, stop, record, as well as a whole bunch of faders, knobs and buttons that you can assign to control various functions in your software. And because most of the cost goes into building the keyboard rather than bundling in the sounds for the same price as a conventional keyboard, a $150 MIDI keyboard has a better keybed with features such as after-touch response than a $150 conventional keyboard. You can find links to MIDI keyboards that I personally use and recommend in the description below. 
I hope you guys found this information useful and that you have a better understanding of the various types of keyboards out there. My name is Jeremy C and I will see you soon in my next video.